kicking off our list at number 10. Secret Cinderella Suite. Cinderella's castle at Disney World, of course, it's the main attraction. Without that castle, it would just be a Canadian theme park. Of course, the castle is a smaller scale than a real medieval one, so it's a surprise to find out there's actually a real hidden suite in there. And yes, it's quite magical. You can sleep there and probably get bed bugs, I don't know. To get there, you'll need to take a pumpkin carriage elevator. And in the actual suite, you'll find two beds and a pullout couch. Yeah, nothing more enchanting than a pullout. Who gets that one? Let's draw straws. There's beautiful stained glass windows, a fireplace to keep you warm at night in Florida. But I almost forgot the most important detail. You need to be invited. Yeah, you gotta be important. Can't just buy your way in, right? Can't just get daddy's credit card and fast pass your way in that line. You gotta win a contest or something like that. I don't think I'd want to spend a night there, to be honest. It doesn't look very cozy. It's like one of those cottages you stay at and you're like, I'm scared, I'm really uncomfortable. This is a little too old for me. Number nine, DMZ. Despite what its name says and implies, the Korean demilitarized zone is perhaps one of the most militarized places in the entire world. It's like, hey, there's nothing going on here with military stuff. This is the location that marks the separation between North and South Korea, and it was established to serve as a sort of buffer zone between two countries. There are tons of military facilities in this zone, and only high-ranking officials are allowed in. You'll hopefully never see this. This is exactly what led to the creation of the civilian control line, which is a line that created an additional buffer zone to the demilitarized zone, which is meant to further restrict access to any civilians or unauthorized personnel. So they added more of a do not enter. It's thick, you'll never see this. Number eight, Surtsey Island. This island was born in 1963. And by that, I mean, literally, it emerged from the sea in that year, just off the coast of Iceland, after four years of being formed by an undersea volcano. Yeah, brand new island, nice. Happy birthday, I guess? What do we do here? What could we possibly do with a new island? Well, I'm sure humans could find a million and one ways to ruin it. Like, you know, put another Cinderella suite in the middle of it, probably. And surprisingly, we decided not to do that at all. Instead, this island was protected in order to allow scientists to study how ecosystems form and what happens when there's zero human involvement. That's the whole idea. Yeah, not a bad call, right? This means that those who are permitted to go to the island have some super strict rules to adhere to, right? No touchy-touchy, no spit, no crying. There's nothing, no one should know that we've ever been here, right? One of these rules is no seeds, okay? and no using the facilities on the island, okay? No taking okay? You gotta hold it until 6 p.m. Have fun, don't forget the clock in. That second rule is in place because one day scientists found a tomato growing on the island and they were quite confused as, you know, how, considering what I just told you. Yeah, it turns out somebody had gone number two not too long past and then, you know, a tomato came out because he had a little seed in his, uh, his own Right, you get it. Number seven, Ed and Lorraine Warren's Occult Museum. Okay, heading into Spookyville for this one. If you've seen Annabelle Comes Home, this next one should ring a bell. The character Daniela in the movie, she tries to communicate to a loved one beyond the grave, but in order to do so, she puts on a bracelet from Ed and Lorraine's Occult Museum. It's called a morning bracelet. It's kind of like the Q-ray bracelet, but does the opposite things. Makes you curse instead of smart. Now, there isn't a morning bracelet in the real life Occult Museum, but there is such thing as the Pearls of Death. And those are locked Away. Those are very real. Those are lovely too, might I add. These pearls were added to the museum after a woman claimed they were strangling her on its own, which is absolutely terrifying. It's like those candy necklaces that we had growing up and they'd get tight all of a sudden. You're like, oh my God. The second this poor woman put these pearls on, she needed everybody around her to help yank them from her neck. Now these haunted pearls sit in the Ed and Lorraine Occult Museum. These ones have nothing on Martha Wayne. Oh Lord. Number six, Naples Secret Adult Room. Scandalous Pompeii Excavations. Ancient Playboy, here we go, this one's pretty funny. After the eruption of Mount Vesuvius back in 79 AD, the small city of Pompeii was sadly covered in hot ash. The ancient Roman ruins are still being uncovered today, but back in the 1700s, most of the city was excavated for the first time. And the King of Naples got the best of the best, right? First dibs. Most of the contents are now kept in the archeological museum in Naples, but some have to be held in the secret room. Yeah, see in the past, you had to receive permission from the king to take a peek into this sensual, <laughs> sensual art. There were 30 brothels in Pompeii, so of course, surrounding artwork served as advertisement for said brothels, if anything. Just old drawings or carvings of people intertwined with one another. Yo, I found that stash. <sighs> Number five, Svalbard Seed Vault. Deep within a mountain that sits in between Norway and the North Pole sits this vault that is more than 320 feet deep. It's just hidden inside of a mountain, okay? This vault holds a massive collection of seeds. 
It'd be the worst case for that other island, eh? They're like, no, keep this vault away, please. N none of those. The vault that holds these seeds are made to withstand both man-made and natural disasters. And the seeds held inside are meant to be kept safe so that in the case of sort of, you know, a huge disaster or the end of the world arrives, Seeds will be fine. Yeah, we're good. Just some watermelon seeds will make it, but we're all doomed. Sick. The seeds kept safe inside would ensure the continuation of a wide variety of diverse food options in case things go south, you know what I mean? The door to this vault is only open a few times a year and just a few people are allowed inside in order to deliver seeds to their shelves. Yeah, just a doomsday vault full of seeds. That's great. Now I'm nervous. Number four, Snake Island. This island's located in Brazil and it's one of the most dangerous in the entire world because of the name I just gave you. It's full of snakes. I don't think I have to explain this one. It is thought that Snake Island came to be when the snakes got trapped as a result of the rising sea levels, which then disconnected the island from the mainland, and then all these snakes got stuck here, and now it's just full of snakes. This is so horrible. The reason people aren't allowed to visit is obviously to protect humans who don't want to go and get attacked by thousands of snakes, but also to protect the snakes from thousands of humans, because we're pretty as well. Just like anywhere else in the world, because of the lack of human interference, they're striving. It's actually a healthy, beautiful island. That's what the snakes said, not me. I don't like snakes, but the snakes seem to like it. They're having a great time together. It's like Survivor season 58, just snakes. There's a critically endangered species of snake called a golden lancehead on this island. There's about 4,000 of them, which is, of course, critical to the species continuing on. So let's not touch it. Let's not poke any snakes, let them live. As of now, only a few select researchers and the Brazilian Navy, of course, are permitted to go to the island. Number three, Disney's underground tunnels. Back to Disney, where dreams are made of, or something like that. In a place like Disney, there has to be room for employees to take a breather, right? That much time and character, all those high fives. I mean, I've done mascot work for a theme park before. It's hot, it's sweaty, it's gross. It's not the easiest job, but they're humans too, okay? They need to take breaks, clock in and out, all that jazz. Where does that magic happen, okay? This needs to be away from the public eye, of course. You can't have people watching as Mickey takes his head off to go for a smoke. No way, that's magic is completely ruined at that point. So instead, Disney has these hidden underground tunnels to move around the park without worrying about staying in character or getting caught in large crowds. During the early park days, Walt Disney himself saw a cowboy from Frontierland walking through Tomorrowland, and it just didn't make any sense. He's like, wait a minute, the timeline's here, he's got a hat and space, what? It took him out of the magic, right? More than fair. So he made 392,000 square feet of underground tunnels. And yes, they look as creepy as I'm describing them to be. There's zero magic in these tunnels. I mean, God, can we throw a poster up or something? Number two, restricted Aboriginal art. While some collections are kept out of sight for museum visitors because they're, you know, extremely scandalous in nature, like, <sighs> Hmm, one of those. Others are kept in secret rooms out of respect. We don't want people touching or messing with these things. At the National Museum of Australia, David Klaus, senior curator of the museum's Aboriginal programs, he wrote this long report explaining on the choice to hide these artifacts from history and why he does so. David himself has said, quote, that is the responsibility of museums to respect the cultures they want to depict. The public use of Aboriginal secret and or sacred objects is not consistent with this responsibility, end quote. He's like, yeah, because they didn't want them to be seen. It's kind of simple. In order to gain access to these restricted Aboriginal projects, these beautiful pearl shell ornaments, all these things, you need permission from traditional Aboriginal custodians. Again, no fast passing on this one. And finally, number one, North Sentinel Island. Heading over to India, this island is the home of the Sentinelese tribe, one of the most forbidden islands in the world. But why is that? Well, it's located in the Bay of Bengal. North Sentinel Island is about 1,200 kilometers away from India, okay? It's pretty far out. And while most islands are shrinking or coming out of nowhere, this one actually grew back in 2004. The island lifted up a couple of meters during an earthquake, so the west and south sides gained an extra kilometer, which is pretty useful because the inhabitants on this floating cursed island are among the few uncontacted tribes left in the world. They have apparently been there for thousands of years. There's no sign of agriculture or even fire, yet somehow this tribe has continued to thrive. If we try and get close, they try and drive anybody away. In fact, sadly, back in 2006, two fishermen lost their lives because they got too close to the island without knowing who was on it. The Indian government didn't roll up to the beach and start interrogating locals and taking names. Hey, who did that? No, instead, it's now forbidden to go to the island. We're just gonna respectfully leave it be. Number 10. Washington Monument. This is one of those things that I wish I got to do as a job, you know? Like, YouTube's fun, but also, 
this is pretty fun too. But again, I have a fear of heights, so there's no way I could physically do this ever. You can go inside the Washington Monument, that's no surprise, nor secret. But did you know there's a secret hatch hiding at the very top? In Spider-Man Homecoming, Peter has to save his classmates. They're stuck in the elevator shaft in the monument. Now, in order to reach them before they fall, he has to kick through this tiny window at the very top. He almost doesn't make it, it takes like three good Spidey kicks. Turns out he could have crawled four feet higher to the top and opened this secret hatch. And then guy could have called it a day, easy. No web fluid nor powers needed, my friends. Also a pretty boring climax. Yeah, you don't need Spider-Man to clean the monument, just people who aren't afraid of heights. Then they pop out of this. They open the hatch and then they just sweep it. I can't even look at this photo. I feel sick to my stomach. <sighs> Number nine, secret insect room. Okay, back to the buggy weirdness, here we go. If you're in Liverpool and you love insects, okay, very specific, but I have just the place for you. Inside the World Museum in Liverpool lies a secret room, and inside it contains a million insects. Yeah, I'm itchy just thinking about this room. They're all dead, by the way, unlike the other ones that I mentioned. These ones aren't ripping apart any carcass eye. Carcass eye? Carcasses? Yeah, carcass eye sounds fun. This collection began back in 1855, the 13th Earl of Derby. He's like, you know what I need? A cupboard full of shiny bugs. Let's start that. Thousands of specimens hide in this room, including the world's largest beetle and moth. It's so gross, I almost had a little saliva when I said that. It felt really gross saying that. The world's largest beetle. Ugh, it's so gross, they're so shiny. Imagine night at the museum, but it takes place here at the World Museum in London. Bugs everywhere, Ben Stiller wouldn't make it out. No way, no way in hell. Owen Wilson, little Owen Wilson, toast. Number eight, Eiffel Tower apartment. I live on the 11th floor and let me tell you, way too high. That's like 10 stories higher than I could preferably handle. Like I mentioned earlier, I am not a fan of heights at all. My legs get all shaky. Uh, maybe it's because I'm tall already, I don't know, but it sucks. But this one here gives me a hard time as well. Above the Eiffel Tower, above the main observation deck, when it was completed back in 1889, Gustav Eiffel, the, you know, Mr. Eiffel himself who made the blueprints, he included for himself a sweet little condo at the very top. This 100 square meter room sounds spacey at first, but it was full of gear, the elevator shaft was there, it was kind of like Harry Potter's closet in comparison to the rest of the house, you know what I mean? This room had a kitchen, bathroom, thank God, and a living room. God forbid you open a window though. Papers would be all over the place. Gustav's hair must have been messy all the time. Number seven, Trafalgar Square. Come on down to Trafalgar Square. We got tiny police stations. It's a Rick and Morty joke. Little Brits, come on, that's a great one. Back in 1926, strikes and protests were every other week. It's almost like, you know, increase to labor and a 13% wage cut is a bad thing. Weird, odd. So workers in every industry all went on strike. They stopped working for nine days and most of these protests would happen in London's Trafalgar Square. So in order to keep an eye on things without looking like you're, you know, keeping an eye on things in 1926, you know, walking around, smacking a bat in your hands, blowing smoke in people's faces, you know, that kind of stuff. Shit they do in Peaky Blinders. Yeah, you can't do that. It doesn't really calm a crowd down. So instead, the police built a tiny secret police station in one of the large light posts. Yeah, they're just hiding in a light post, just ready to, ready to tackle someone. Imagine a dog starts peeing on the post and then all of a sudden 15 police officers come out of said light post. I'm so confused. I'd be confused for the rest of my life. It looks fake, it looks like a little information kiosk. Nope, just a SWAT team inside, ready to go. Number six, Supreme Court basketball court. A court in a court? What is this, Inception? What's going on here? This is the Supreme Court, mainly referred to as the highest court in the land. Back in the 40s, this was the storage room for the courthouse, but over time, it turned into a workout room, being so large, I wouldn't even call that a storage room in the first place, right? But courthouse employees would work out there, and eventually some genius decided to throw up a couple of backboards. So yes, there's a basketball court right above the Supreme Court. Yeah, imagine hearing players' shoes squeaking during a trial. Your Honor, I believe somebody just got juked out. I don't know, that's what it sounds like. Number five, Brooklyn Bridge Wine Cellar. Here we go. I'm not a wine guy myself, but I respect sommeliers. They all have that cool mustache and like to mansplain to you about grapes. Very, very good job, I like it. I like getting mansplained about what I'm drinking and why I'm drinking it. They have books about wine just stored in their head at all times, it's a very impressive job. They know everything about grapes and they're also pretty cool, what a dream job. Wine is a lifestyle to many, so if you live in New York City and you're a big fan of Merlot, well, listen up. The Brooklyn Bridge connects Manhattan and Brooklyn, right? It was built in 1883, and at the time, it was the longest bridge in the world, until 1903. Chief Bridge Engineer John A. Roebling, as well as his son, Washington Roebling, 
Clean cool name. They both worked on the building plans and in order to help the city financially, after you, you know, just spent 15 million on a bridge, they included two wine cellars, one on each shore, as well as other chambers that could be rented out. Not a bad gig, not a bad Airbnb if you ask me. The plan worked and over the following 40 years, wine was stored in the dark, cool granite cellars on both sides. Number four. Mount Rushmore. When sculptor Gutzon Borglum carefully planned out his designs for Mount Rushmore, the iconic American landmark in South Dakota, he included a hidden room. The room's purpose was to ideally be a time capsule, right? In a titanium vault full of records telling the story of Mount Rushmore's construction and all that American stuff. So it doesn't get lost thousands of years in the future. Now, you know, I think carving presidents' faces into the sacred land of natives was enough, but Sure, let's add a vault. The Hall of Records was meant to be this massive hall with an 800 foot staircase, bronze walls, a massive bronze eagle. He wanted future generations to look at this place in awe as we do like Stonehenge, right? Work began in July 1938, but after a year, the project was put on halt to, you know, focus on the presidents first maybe. Let's finish that job before we do the secret vault in the back. Borglum sadly passed away in 1941, so the 70-foot cave that was completed was now the vault. Yeah, not as big or flashy as he wanted in the first place, but still, there is a titanium vault behind the 1,200 pound slab of granite. Number three, Grand Central Tennis Court. It's kind of hard to mention the Supreme Supreme Court without talking about the tennis courts at Grand Central. Yeah, those exist too, let's do it. In the early 1800s, trade and banking fueled the city, specifically via railroad. Both freight and passenger, it was booming, right? We love trains, gotta get those train bonds. So come 1871, Grand Central now opens up, but the Vanderbilt Tennis Club opened in 1965. It wasn't even tennis either. This room had also been a recording studio, an art gallery, it hosted breakdancing, boxing, double dutch tournaments, you name it. If you ever see a sweaty guy walk out of a janitor's closet with a bunch of tennis balls, go in there, go poke around a bit. Something's going on. It's like when Spider-Man comes out of the closet, Spider-Man 2 with all the pizzas. Nobody asks questions. They're like, hey, where'd that guy just come from? Where'd all this delicious pizzas come from? Number two, cursed music box. Okay, we gotta include another horrifying element from the Warren Occult Museum. We all love that in the other parts, so let's continue it. The Perrin Family Music Box. Remember this? Director James Wan wanted to use the music box in the first film, in The Conjuring, because mirrors and creepy tones make for great suspense, of course. But also, this was a real haunted artifact from the real house. Today, the box is safely stored in the Warren's Occult Museum, alongside other items that look more or less normal upon first glance, and then you get close and your soul becomes possessed. You know, they're all haunted, never go in this room. This part in the movie actually scared the shit out of me. Any mirror scene, I can't do it. I just end up eating my shirt. And finally, number one. Mayan underworld. Going back over to the ancient Maya, let's finish off strong. Back in 2003, quite recent, in Mexico, archeologist Sergio Gomez arrived to work. The beautiful Mayan serpent pyramid, that's where he worked, right? What a, what a gig. Out of nowhere, there was a sinkhole that just appeared overnight on property, but it was super close to the actual pyramid. So Sergio covered it with a tent quickly, obviously not knowing where to begin with this now stressful situation at one of the most historical sites on the planet. Sergio had to go in there and figure out where it led to, right? That's obviously the next question. Sergio had been working there for 30 years prior. He knew the Serpent Pyramid pretty well at that point, but what he found that day was hiding underneath him that entire time for 30 years. He got a few coworkers to lower him into the fresh sinkhole, so right off the bat, this guy deserves a raise. Let's do that, let's figure that out first. He was lowered into this secret tunnel, this ancient tunnel. This tunnel was blocked off purposely thousands of years ago, so there's lots of work to be done, but why was it blocked off, right? That's the big question. The tunnel was excavated for about a year afterwards, and it was determined that it was blocked on purpose to stop people from going back and forth. Because all these pyramids connected to one another. The tunnel connected the Serpent Pyramid to the Temple of the Moon and to the Temple of the Sun. Now, it's one thing to discover secret tunnels and pyramid entrances your entire life, but to fall down another layer of secrets almost 30 years later? I don't know, it's kinda something's afoot here. I have a feeling we'll never know who really built these or why, but I'm on it, I'm figuring it out. Number 10, Medici Chapels. This one begins with an epic discovery. Back in 1975, the director of the Medici Chapels Museum in Florence, Italy, he was searching for a new exit route for visitors. He was trying to expand whilst controlling traffic a little more. We love that, we love big moves. Now, in doing so, the director stumbled across this trap door beneath a closet. And there also lied a few clues on the walls. There were sketches and drawings, the style of which seemed to belong to one Leonardo da Vinci. Not a bad 
find at all, my friends. This room was immediately closed for renovations. It was held a secret until 2020. So for many, this is still widely unknown. I hope you've learned a thing or two already on this list. We're not even at number nine yet, and you already know about some ancient trap doors in Italy. There you go, number nine. Metro 2. During the time where Stalin was in power, it's said that he instructed that an underground secret transport system would be built. It was known as Metro 2. This mysterious underground system is said to connect different administrative institutions, and it's even rumored that it contains apartments and different technical rooms. It's an underground city, basically. I don't know how to tell you that. It's sort of like a secret escape tunnel for high-level officials, right? Now, of course, it's completely blocked off to outsiders or the general public, and while the Moscow Metro administration denies that these tunnels even exist, there was an urban an exploration group back in 1994 that claimed to have found the entrance. At this point in time, only one metro exists on paper. We'll go find the other one, right? We can go find it, some flashlights, maybe a spare weekend. We'll get to the bottom of it. Number eight, Whaley House. Located in San Diego and built in 1857, the Whaley House is an example of, you know, why you don't build your house on cursed land. The site that this family home was built on was also the location of San Diego's first public gallows. Yeah, what a fun fact that is. Nice, rich history here. And apparently right after moving in, Thomas Whaley said he himself could hear the footsteps of Yankee Jim Robinson, who had previously lost his life in the same gallows only four years prior. After the family had settled in, they experienced a bunch of family tragedies, most of which actually happened inside of the house, hence the, you know, cursed land aspect. As of today, the Whaley House is now a museum and apparently the family members continue to haunt said site. Number seven, Lake Acid. Nice, a nice acid lake to cool off. It's also referred to as the gateway to hell. Rightfully so. The Danakil Depression is made up of boiling hot ponds that release chlorine and sulfur gases into the air. So you don't even have to take a dip in this acid lake. Just standing around it can simply kill you. So where does something like this come from besides science fiction horror films? How does a lake of acid just come to be? How, like what? What did we do to you to deserve an acid lake, my friend? This horrifying landscape is the result of three continental plates being torn apart. Yeah, it's part of the East African rift system. So not one, but two active volcanoes surround the Danakil Depression, hence the, you know, bubbling magma lurking below the dry landscape. That explains it. Two volcanoes. It's one of the hottest places on Earth for a reason. Active hydrothermal ozones aren't new per se, that's what Yellowstone National Park is, but you need a gas mask to go to this park, so we'll, we'll stick to Yellowstone for now. Number six, British Museum's adult room. Better clean your eyes after this one. Some dirty stuff coming in. The British Museum, they have this long lost adult themed room. And it's exactly what you think when I say adult themed, right? The museum itself dates back to the mid 1700s. In its initial opening, the museum only let 10 people in at a time. Now, of course, it holds many more every day, but some collections, not everybody can handle. It's not for the, not for everybody's eyes. In the Victorian era, the museum had a secret room for obscene objects, or objects that are deemed perverse. There's just a part of a temple wall that shows the dirty deed, just intimate ancient yoga, just carved in, right? Not going anywhere. In the collection includes a Roman terracotta lamp that depicts a naked woman on a crocodile. There's also a cabinet of obscene objects, which is just a cool name. Sounds like a Harry Potter book, doesn't it? Number five, flesh-eating beetle room. Okay, enough talk about ancient butts. Let's move on to some weird stuff again, shall we? In Chicago's Field Museum, this one's chock full of secret rooms, I feel sick immediately just reading about this. The Field Museum uses hide beetles to clean its specimens. Real beetles to eat the stuff. Yeah, in order to get each of these carcasses ready for showtime, these beetles are on the clock. They're business oriented. They come in in just a few hours, a small rodent can be completely cleaned. Nothing but bones left. How gross is that? Imagine this is where Peter Parker got his powers. Ugh, that'd be a different movie. Or Night at the Museum. That would also be a very different movie if it took place in here, in the old beetle room. Number four, Vatican Secrets. The archives, first of all, they're 53 miles long. There's around 35,000 volumes of catalog, secret catalog. The Vatican's secret archives are no joke. They're very real, but in order to see them for yourselves, it's gonna take some time, a lot of time. We don't have any time, really. The codex is on a public, hence why I'm including them. Only highly respected scholars can access it after they're 75 years old, so you gotta wait a few birthdays. Their official purpose is to house the Holy See's official paperwork. And of course, it's a treasure trove of anything and everything related to the Pope, as well as these long lost ancient documents, because where else do you safely store a letter from Mary Queen of Scots? The archives, that's where. Dudes are out here hucking cakes at the Mona Lisa. Yeah, we're gonna keep ancient notes locked up, I think. Humans can't be trusted, at least till after you're 75. Then it's like, okay, go take a look. There's also a secret room that contains the 200 foot tower of the winds. 
only accessible by these secret archives. So yeah, there's a lot of cool shit down there. Number three, hidden Mickeys. I had some hidden Mickeys myself growing up, but these ones are a little bit different. We'll make it a little brighter now before we get to our top three. Here we go. But Walt Disney himself said, I only hope that we never lose sight of one thing, that it was all started by a mouse. I got to thinking, which mouse? You know, Stuart Little, the mouse with an ear on its back, that's iconic, or Mickey Mouse, the iconic three circles, right? If you're visiting Disney Orlando anytime soon, first of all, have fun, mad FOMO. Second of all, keep an eye open for the hundreds of Mickey Mouse symbols. They're hidden on the walls, the floors, paintings. It's actually kind of creepy. No one knows how many there are. In total, there's rumored to be over a thousand hidden Mickeys. How many did you find? Maybe like four or five, I bet. Probably hard to see. Number two. Death Valley. Okay, and we're back into the bad stuff. We love it. With a name like Death Valley, it's gonna be pretty bad, right? There's a Death Valley in Zelda. That one's, that one's pretty bad. That one sucks, a lot of curses there. Death Valley sits on the California-Nevada border. It's known for, of course, its extreme heat. It's one of the hottest places on Earth. The only desert on the planet that comes close to the same level of heat is in the Middle East and Africa. It's like a different planet, Death Valley. It's horrible. Not a lot of people know just how bad it is. In July 2018, it was considered the hottest place the Earth has ever seen. For four days in a row, the average temperature hit as high as 127 degrees Fahrenheit. For all you Canadians, that's 52 degrees Celsius. Imagine it's 52 outside. Not even close right now and I'm already sweating. Yuck. Never visit Death Valley. So many curses. You'll sweat and turn into bones. Animals, carcasses, not good. And finally, number one, the secret bowling alley. Okay, we'll end this list on a fun note because it's the weekend, okay? It's Saturday, we're all out here having a good time. The Frick Collection resides on the former home of Henry Frick. This is on Manhattan's Upper East Side. A handful of you have probably seen it or have been there. We have like the CN Tower and an aquarium. I'm like, I don't, we don't have any cool museums. This collection is a museum in itself. It contains paintings, sculptures, furniture, all historical, mind you, and all made from European artists as far back as the 13th century. The mansion itself is rather new. That was built in 1913. And of course, it was also used as the Frick's family resident at one point. A rich family in the early 1900s. Nice, you already know there's a lot of secret rooms in there. But what was hiding in there? Apparently some fun rich family stuff, not a lot of curses. Like for example, a two lane bowling alley that was built in 1914. That's fun, we like that. Or a secret billiards room. Again, we like that as well. A wood shop, a little creepy, we'll kind of skip past that one. But how about this tiny diner? So good, we love secret stuff. I don't know, any secret? That sounds a little, little hollow there. I'm gonna check that out after, after work. Something's afoot back there.